learning objectives. In this chapter, the user would learn the following in detail. Camera angles, camera movements, tracking, planning, tilting, rolling, dolly shots, cranes, steady cam, wide screen, aspect ratios and TV safe areas. Use of lenses, zooming versus tracking, studio effects, back and front projection, depth of focus, glass shots, trombone shots. Camera angles. The term camera angle means different things to different people, but it always refers to the way a shot is composed. Some people use it to include all camera shot types. Others use it to specifically mean the angle between the camera and the subject. Eye level. This is the most common view, being the real world angle that we are all used to. It shows subjects as we would expect to see them in real life. It is a fairly neutral shot. High angle. A high angle shows the subject from above, that is, the camera is angled down towards the subject. This has the effect of diminishing the subject, making them appear less powerful, less significant, or even submissive. Low angle. This shows the subject from below, giving them the impression of being more powerful or dominant. Bird's eye. The scene is shown from directly above. This is a completely different and somewhat unnatural point of view which can be used for dramatic effect or for showing a different spatial perspective. In drama, it can be used to show the positions and motions of different characters and objects, enabling the viewer to see things that the characters can't. The bird's eye view is also very useful in sports, documentaries, etc. Slanted or Dutch tilt. This is where the camera is purposely tilted to one side, so the horizon is at an angle. This creates an interesting and dramatic effect. Famous examples include Carol Reed's The Third Man, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, and the Batman series. Dutch tilts are also popular in MTV-style video production, where unusual angles and lots of camera movement play a big part. Camera Movements Introduction Effective Planning of Shots Most people enjoy shooting videos whether they be home videos or more creative projects. It's important to develop a polished approach if you want to be taken seriously as a professional. Here are some tips for effective planning of shots. Plan your shot. Don't make things up as you go along. What kind of shot are you using? Where should the camera go? Where should the subjects be and what will they do? What does the lighting look like? Will there be any camera movement? Steady shots are better than shaky shots. It may seem obvious, but it's amazing how many students shoot shaky handheld video for their projects. Use a tripod. Don't pan, tilt, zoom unless you have a good reason. A steady motionless camera is almost always your best choice. Shots that move can be distracting. When panning or tilting, move the camera very slowly. The tendency is for the beginner to move too fast. When making a pan, tilt or similar shot, move very slowly and deliberately to allow the eye to properly process the scene. Don't fire hose your shots. Fire hosing occurs when you use a camera eyepiece to look around, moving the camera up and down, left and right. Frame your subject using the rule of thirds. In general, avoid placing your subject dead center in the frame. This creates a static, uninteresting composition. Leave enough lead room, nose room. When a subject is seen in profile, you generally want to position the camera so that the larger portion of the screen is on the side of the subject, facing right or left. Shoot from several different vantage points. Whenever possible, shoot your subject action from a variety of points of view. This will give you more options when time comes to edit, allowing you to cut between multiple shots Use the 180 degree rule when shooting two people. Respect the line of action. In order to maintain continuity in a scene with two on-camera subjects, imagine a straight line connecting them, the line of action. Roll for several seconds before the action begins. Another common mistake beginners make is not leaving space at the beginning of each shot to use for editing and creating transitions. Hold your shots overshoot. In the same way, 
let your camera run for 10 to 15 seconds after every shot. Avoid backlighting and high contrast lighting. Few things can ruin a shot as quickly as poor lighting. Two of the most common problems are severe backlighting and high contrast lighting. Check your focus. An out of focus shot is useless. Before you shoot, make sure your subject is in focus. Some cameras have autofocus. Check your audio levels. Before you shoot, make sure that the camera is picking up sound, especially if you're shooting dialogue or an interview. Most cameras have a visual display that shows the audio levels. Planning. Camera shot. A long shot, a long shot will be used to show all three band members standing next to each other in the performance part of the music video. We decided to use this shot because the audience will be able to see all band members and what they are wearing. So as the audience will see the band dressing within the indie subculture, they will know this is an indie genre music video. Mid-shot Mid-shot will also be used to show all three band members next to each other. We decided to use this shot because the audience will be able to see the band closer, which will help remember them and also still see what they are wearing to remind them that they are from the indie subculture. Close-up Close-up will be used to show the faces of the band members. We chose to use this shot because it will help keep in mind this new band. The audience will remember their faces. Choker shot Choker shot will be used in the performance part of the music video. This will be used to show the artist's face expressions during the music video. For example, if the artists are happy, this shot will emphasize their emotion to the audience. Extreme close-up This shot will be used to show in detail what the band members are doing. For example, this shot may be used to show the guitarist playing his notes on the guitar. This will show a relationship between the music and visuals, as stated in Goodwin's theory. Cut in. This shot will be used similar to the extreme close-up shot to show what the artists are doing. For example, in the image on the left, there is a shot of a guitarist. We will use a shot similar to this image. Over the shoulder shot. This shot will be used during the narrative part of the music video when the boy and girl are talking to each other. Similar to the example on the left, we will use the shot when either the girl or the boy is talking. We chose to use the shot because the audience will feel part of the music video and feel connected to the artists. Cutaway This cutaway shot will be used during the conversation of the boy and girl in the narrative part of the music video. We chose the shot because the audience will also feel part of the conversation and therefore feel connected to the artists. Two shot The two shot will be used the conversation of the boy and girl at the cinema. We decided to use this shot because the audience will be able to see the conversation and feel part of it. The audience will also see what the boy and girl are wearing and know this is an indie genre music video. Tracking The term tracking shot is widely considered to be synonymous with dolly shot. That is, a shot in which the camera is mounted on a cart which travels along tracks. However, there are a few variations of both definitions. Tracking is often more narrowly defined as movement parallel to the action or at least at a constant distance, that is the camera which travels alongside the racetrack in track and field events. Dollying is often defined as moving closer to or further away from the action. Some definitions specify that tracking shots use physical tracks, others consider tracking to include handheld walking shots, steady cam shots, etc. Other terms for the tracking shot include Tracking shot and crabbing shot. Tilting. The tilt shot is similar to the pan shot, but the tilt shot moves vertically instead of horizontally. Like the pan shot, the tilt shot can be done handheld or with a tripod with a good head. We would highly recommend using a tripod for a tilt shot. Tilt shots are often used to show the vertical significance of something. For example, imagine being at the bottom of a building and then tilting the camera upwards to capture the entire building structure, which obviously can't fit in one frame. Again, be careful on how steady you are with the movement. Rolling Rolling is a supplemental or alternative footage intercut with the main shot in an interview 
or documentary. The term B-roll originates from the method of 16mm film production from an original camera negative. Frames of work print and of original negative are matched exactly through the use of edge numbers that appeared on each frame of original and work print. But the original was not strung together in a simple linear fashion as was the work print. Instead, the original was edited in a checkerboard pattern with each shot synchronized to an equal length of opaque leader on a second roll. Dolly Shot A dolly is a cart which travels along tracks. The camera is mounted on the dolly and records a shot as it moves. Dolly shots have a number of applications and can provide very dramatic footage. In many circles, a dolly shot is also known as a tracking shot or trucking shot. However, some professionals prefer the more rigid terminology which defines dolly as in and out movement, that is, closer or further away from the subject, while tracking means side to side movement. Most dollies have a lever to allow vertical movement as well, known as a pedestal move. In some cases, a crane is mounted on the dolly for additional height and flexibility. A shot which moves vertically while simultaneously tracking is called a compound shot. Some dollies can also operate without tracks. This provides the greatest degree of movement, assuming, of course, that a suitable surface is available. Special dollies are available for location work and are designed to work with common constraints such as doorway width. Dollies are operated by a dolly grip. In the world of big budget movie making, good dolly grips command a lot of respect and earning power. Cranes In filmmaking and video production, a crane shot is a shot taken by a camera on a crane or jib. The most obvious uses are to view the actors from above or to move up and away from them a common way of ending a movie. Camera cranes go back to the dawn of movie making and were frequently used in silent films to enhance the epic nature of large set and massive crowds. Steadicam Steadicam is a brand of camera stabilizer mount for motion picture cameras that mechanically isolates it from the operator's movement. It allows for a smooth shot even when moving quickly over an uneven surface. The steady cam was invented by cameraman Garrett Brown and was introduced in 1975. The operator wears a harness, the steady cam vest, which is attached to an ISO elastic arm. This is connected by a multi axis and ultra low friction gimbal to the steady cam armature, which has a camera mounted at one end and a counterbalance weight at the other. The counterbalance usually includes a battery pack and a monitor. The monitor substitutes for the camera's viewfinder since the range of motion of the camera relative to the operator makes the camera's own viewfinder unusable. In the film industry, the armature and weight are traditionally called a sled as they resembled a sled in an early model of the Steadicam. The sled includes a top stage where the camera is attached, the post, which in most models can be extended, with the monitor and batteries at the bottom to counterbalance the camera weight. This is how the Steadicam stays upright by simply making the bottom slightly heavier than the top, pivoting at the gimbal. This leaves the center of gravity of the whole rig, however heavy it may be, exactly at the operator's fingertip, allowing deft and finite control of the whole system with the lightest of touches on the gimbal. The skill of the operator is to keep the desired framing and composition by feathering his or her touch on the gimbal while the rig and operator is in motion and indeed when still. Widescreen Widescreen films relying on a wide aspect ratio shots to show themselves off. At first, these were largely landscape shots, but as they didn't give people headaches, they were a lot more successful than 3D films. Aspect ratio The aspect ratio of an image describes the proportional relationship between its width and its height. It is commonly expressed as two numbers separated by a colon, as in 16 is to 9. For an x is to y aspect ratio, no matter how big or small the image is, if the width is divided into x units of equal length and the height is measured using the same length unit, the height will be measured to be y units. For example, consider a group of measures, 
all with an aspect ratio of 16 is to 9. One image is 16 inches wide and 9 inches high. Another image is 16 centimeters wide and 9 centimeters high. A third is 8 yards wide and 4.5 yards high. TV safe area. Safe area is a term used in television production to describe the areas of the television picture that can be seen on television screens. Older televisions can display less of the space outside of the safe area than ones made more recently. Flat panel screens, plasma displays and liquid crystal displays and liquid crystal display screens generally can show most of the picture outside the safe area. The use of safe areas in television production ensures that the most important parts of the picture are seen by the majority of viewers. The size of the title safe area is typically specified in pixels or percent. The NTSC and PAL analog television standards do not specify official overscan amounts and producers of television programming use their own guidelines. Camera lens. A camera lens, also known as photographic lens, or photographic objective is an optical lens or an assembly of lenses used in conjunction with the camera body and mechanism to make images of objects either on photographic film or on other media capable of storing an image chemically or electronically. Let us study some basic terms related to uses of lens. A single lens mounted in a frame with a handle or stand is a magnifying glass. Lenses are used as prosthetics for the correction of visual impairments such as myopia, hyperopia, presbyopia, and astigmatism. Most lenses used for other purposes have strict axial symmetry. Eyeglass lenses are only approximately symmetric. They are usually shaped to fit in a roughly oval, not circular frame. The optical centers are placed over the eyeballs. Their curvature may not be axially symmetric to correct for astigmatism. Other uses are in imaging systems such as monocular, binoculars, telescopes, microscopes, cameras, and projectors. Some of these instruments produce a virtual image when applied to the human eye. Others produce a real image which can be captured on photographic film or an optical sensor and can be viewed on a screen. A large lens will create enough intensity to burn a flammable object at the focal point. Since ignition can be achieved even with a poorly made lens, lenses have been used as burning glasses for at least 2,400 years. Zooming versus tracking. Zooming. Zooming is one camera move that most people are probably familiar with. It involves changing the focal length of the lens to make the subject appear closer or further away in the frame. Most video cameras today have built-in zoom features. Some have manual zooms as well, and many have several zoom speeds. Zooming is one of the most frequently used camera moves and one of the most overused. Use it carefully. Camera tracking. Camera tracking, or match moving, or 3D tracking, is a process of analyzing a video clip or film shot to determine where in 3D the camera went, what its field of view was, and where the parts of the set were. The 3D path of a large moving object can be determined as well. The first step is identifying and tracking features. A feature is a specific point in the image that a tracking algorithm can lock onto and follow through multiple frames. Often features are selected because they are bright or dark spots, edges or corners, depending on the particular tracking algorithm. Popular programs use template matching based on NCC score and RMS error. What is important is that each feature represents a specific point on the surface of a real object. As a feature is tracked, it becomes a series of two-dimensional coordinates that represents the position of the feature across a series of frames. This series is referred to as a track. Once tracks have been created, they can be used immediately for 2D motion tracking or then be used to calculate 3D information. Studio Effects Studio has an extensive range of digital signal processing, DSP effects, and processes that are used to color or tonally shape existing audio recordings, software instruments, and external audio sources in real time. These will cover almost every audio processing and manipulation need you will encounter in your day-to-day -day work. 
The most common processing options include EQs, dynamic processors, modulations, distortions, reverbs, and delays. Further advanced features include precise signal meters and analyzers, a test tone generator, noise reduction, pitch correction, imaging, bass enhancement, and time-altering processes and utilities. Front and Back Projection A front projection effect is an in-camera visual effects process in film production for combining foreground performance with pre-filmed background footage. In contrast to rear projection, which projects footage onto a screen from behind the performers, front projection projects the pre-filmed material over the performers and onto a highly reflective background surface. Compared to back projection, the front projection process uses less studio space and generally produces sharper and more saturated images as the background plate is not being viewed through a projection screen. The process also has several advantages over blue screen matte photography, which could suffer from clipping, mismatched mats, film shrinkage, black or blue hallowing, garbage matte artifacts, and image degradation and excessive grain. Depth of focus. Depth of focus is a lens optics concept that measures the tolerance of placement of the image plane, the film plane in a camera in relation to the lens. In a camera, depth of focus indicates the tolerance of the film's displacement within the camera and is therefore sometimes referred to as lens to film tolerance. Determining factors. In small format cameras, the smaller circle of confusion limit yields a proportionately smaller depth of focus. In motion picture cameras, different lens mounts and camera gate combinations have exact flange focal depth measurements to which lenses are calibrated. It is often advised in 35mm motion picture filming not to use filters behind the lens if the lens is wider than 25mm. Glass Shots The camera lens shot glass is one of the coolest novelty shot glasses ever created. This highly detailed shot glass is made to look like a real camera lens and is a must-have item for alcoholic photography enthusiasts. Trombone Shot the trombone shot is an unsettling in-camera effect that appears to undermine normal visual perception. It is part of many cinematic techniques used in filmmaking and television production. The effect is achieved by zooming a zoom lens to adjust the angle of view, often referred to as field of view or FOV, while the camera dollies or moves towards or away from the subject in such a way as to keep the subject the same size in the frame throughout. In its classic form, the camera angle is pulled away from a subject while the lens zooms in, or vice versa. Thus, during the zoom, there is a continuous perspective distortion, the most directly noticeable feature being that the background appears to change size relative to the subject. Conclusion In this chapter, we have covered the following in detail. Camera angles, camera movements, tracking, planning, tilting, Rolling, dolly shots, cranes, steady cam, wide screen, aspect ratios and TV safe areas. Use of lenses, zooming versus tracking, studio effects, back and front projection, depth of focus, glass shots, trombone shots.